here we are going live once again on riffing with griffin let me put my headphones on i got my headphones and i got my new mic system but you know how we do let's start it ladies and gentlemen welcome back your favorite podcast. Voice is milky today, ball. Welcome back to Riffin' with Riffin'. We got a new mic set up. I feel like a radio disc jockey, but it is what it is. On today's show, I want to talk about Shane Gillis on SNL, which also leads me into a discussion about some canceled comedian shows at the Seattle Comedy Club. Plus, I want to review the new Airbender on Netflix. Also, check out my boy Fahim Anwar's special. All right, y'all. What up, y'all? What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Welcome to Riffin' with Griffin. Oh, I didn't even do this right. I usually had the, the, the intro thing on. Well, whatever. We're here. Riffin' with Griffin is back once again. I don't know. if I'm, I got this new mic. I don't know what you guys think of it. <laughs> but anyways, welcome to Riffin' with Griffin. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, hit the notifications. Uh, hope it sounds good. Let me know how it sounds in chat. We'll hope it good. Whatever. We'll see how we just. I got I, my mic arm broke, so I got this new mic arm, and it's like hanging down for you guys listening, like I'm some kind of radio disc jockey. But whatever. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, I'm on Twitch daily. Uh, hit me up on Twitch. But you know, it's also a way to support the show because you could be a subscriber on Twitch. And if you're a subscriber on Twitch, what you do is you get my extra Monday content, Monday Nuance with uh, Riffin with Griffin, Monday Nuance, which I do live on Twitch. And if you're a subscriber, you get to watch the whole thing. But if not, you can also go to Patreon and be a Patreon member because I have now consistently putting up Patreon content every single week. So make sure you go and check that out uh, week weekly. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you check that out weekly. Um. Anyways, um. What else am I trying to talk about? Oh, guys, we have a new sponsor of the show. Uh, shout out to Robin Hood. Robin Hood. If you only have a 401k, you're not getting the most for retirement. Add an IRA, then boost by 3% with Robinhood. And if you transfer in any retirement account, you get 3% on top of that. There's no limit to the match. Robinhood Gold gets you the biggest contribution match of any IRA on the market. Sign up for Robinhood Gold at Robinhood.com slash boost. By April 30th, subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info, investment involves risk. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Match on transfer subject to additional terms and conditions. Robinhood Financial, LLC, member SIPC. Uh, thank you, Robinhood, for being a sponsor of the show. Keeps the show going. And like I say, you guys could be a sponsor of the show too by... Um, going to, uh, you know, becoming a Patreon member links in the profile. I mean, guys in the chat right now, like I just, this feels ridiculous to me. This mic arm, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just hope it sounds good. You know, it just feels weird. It's like all in my face. I, I, I don't know if I should put it to the side. I don't know, I, but I just feel like I should be talking like this. Welcome to Riffin with Griffin on K5705. Riffin with Griffin out of Los Angeles. Next up, caller number 75. You know, I just feel like I should be talking like that, you know, but whatever. I actually always wanted to be a radio disc jockey. You know what I used to do? And I wish I could find these tapes. 
But I used to play my mom's favorite records on the record player, but I would record myself. And in between songs, I would pretend like I was a radio disc jockey. You know, in between songs, you know, I'd be like, hey, everybody, thanks for listening to Barry Manilow. You know, that's the kind of song my mom, my mom loved, like Johnny Mathis and stuff like that. And I'd be like, that was Johnny Mathis here on 105.7 K-Sun. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I guess I should put some stickers on it. If you guys have your own, maybe I can, maybe, maybe like I'll put sponsorship on the microphone right here every week. <laughs> That would be kind of funny, right? Uh, and I'm overthinking it. It just feels weird, right? But anyways, uh, thanks for coming to Riff and Grip. Big show today. I want to talk about a bunch of stuff today. And I need, you know what I need you guys to do, too, is I need you guys to tweet out, uh, you know, tweet this out. Share with your friends, you know, and that kind of stuff. But um, but before I even start, though, I do want to, uh, I do want to acknowledge my buddy, Fahim Anwar. He has a new special out. Fahim, and I got the link in the profile. This guy is one of my favorite comedians. We're at the comedy store together all the time. And I'm telling you, this is one of the few guys I will sit in the back and watch. So I do highly suggest you check out his special and share it for him because this is what comics got to do now. We got to put our stuff out on YouTube and share it with the world like that because some of the networks, they don't, you know, they got their own agenda. So we're doing it our own way. But I'm telling you right now, I fully endorse this comedian. He is one of the funniest I've ever seen do comedy, like for real. Not just saying it because he's my friend. I'm saying it because I mean it. So make sure you check him out. I got the link in my profile. So check out Fahim. Mofo is hilarious. Okay. Um, yeah, Janine in the chat. Fahim is criminally underrated. Like, pfft, that's what, you know, me and him are the criminally underrated club. <laughs> that should be that we should go on tour together. That'd be the name of our tour. Criminally underrated. I got to tell him about that. Um, so what's going on? Uh, you know, no, no new news in the baby front, you know, uh, you know, because, uh, Wolford was born on February 1st, you know, which is great. You could track the day. So now he's 28 days old, <laughs> 28 days old. So it's, it's pretty cool. He's just a bundle of joy, man. I just love you when he just falls asleep on my chest or I just hug him or, you know, you know, my favorite thing to do is to make him fart, you know? You do like the the bicycles, you know what I mean? You do the bicycle moves, then you push him forward, and he just like when you, when that fart comes out, I'm telling you, whoo! Um, that's just the greatest. <laughs> I don't know why I love that so much, but I do. Maybe it shouldn't be so. Yeah, is it? What's better? Is it better? To, I'm overthinking this mic thing, guys. It's crazy. Is it better like this? Because but then that back part looks stupid, huh? It's probably better like this. I don't even know, guys. This is whatever. We'll, we'll work it out. I feel like I should move it over, but whatever. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, we're here. All right, so yeah, like, like I say, nothing new to report. Just the regular ass new baby stuff. Sleep's terrible, but I've been working out still. You know, and I got to tell you, man, I am so glad I've been working out. Um, just really glad I've been working out, um, because it's like, and speaking of working out, I'm so sick of people sending me this video. Okay. Yes. I just want to, I'm just going to acknowledge it. I've seen it. Yes. I know this sort of looks like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes, this guy kind of looks like me. I just don't understand why this guy can't, why can't he <laughs> like, like, why can't he break that freaking, uh, this, this wood, right? D doesn't that look crazy that he can't break this wooden thing, you know? So there's this picture that like everybody was sending me this thing. Like, like it was, it was getting kind of ridiculous. So I said, you know what? Let me just put this thing up myself because I got so sick of people sending it to me. I was like, all right, I've seen it. Yes, I know the guy kind of looks like me if, if I was buff, right? <laughs> But I will say this, um, I have been working now. I, I got back into the gym since, uh, you know, uh, I've had the baby. And man, I tell you, I, I think about it and I'm like so glad that I was, uh, that I was doing that, you know, like, I'm so glad I started the workout process because it's just, 
you know, wait, what's going on here? Why doesn't this fucking go live? I don't know. Anyways, um, it helped me. It's like just energy, being able to sleep properly when I do get to sleep, uh, having the strength and stamina and all this kind of stuff. So I'm, my workout process is continuing. I'm continuing the journey. I signed up again with my trainer again. Eventually, I want to get it to the point where I don't need my trainer. I'm just going to go do the exercises that I know how to do. And then I might start something else. Like I want to go boxing again. I enjoyed that or some sort of like activity like that. If I'm going to pay for something, I'll pay for like that once a week combined with doing my regular three days a week going to the gym and doing the weightlifting because I really do love the weightlifting, you know. So that's the, that's the thing that's going on. My own personal update is that. I'm continuing the workout process. All right, let's go to comments now, guys. Let's look at these comments. I want to thank everybody for commenting. You can also comment. You just comment on my uh, YouTube channel. Always some fun comments in here. Uh, you know, it's some good, some bad, what it is, what it is. Uh, Apple IR Brothers, welcome, Wolfie. Y- uh, y'all did good, Eric and wife, as a new mom and one who cares for an elderly grandmother. I love to hear ex- ex- experiences as a dad and a son. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. So Tour de France, ha, that's a good name. One day ago, said uh, this is a good this is a good one to discuss because he said, of course, the actions of the climate activists worked. You're talking about it. It's bring attention to the cause. How many other media outlets worldwide talk about this story? Many. Whether or not you specifically care about the cause is irrelevant, as it will reach those who could possibly care about the cause, which is now a number. Greater than zero, you talked about it on your podcast, therefore it's effective. The desired outcome is achieved. Um, I like I only have to agree with this this uh I, I, out because to me, when when a climate activist like you know, when they like block the 15 freeway headed to Vegas or they throw paint on the Mona Lisa, because that was one of the examples that we gave from last week, I don't think it really works. Because we're not talking about like we're not Googling, and maybe you should. Maybe take this moment right now and Google what's going on with the climate. How can I contribute to helping the climate? How can I, what do I need to do? Like, you know, I don't think people are actually doing that. What we're talking about is these idiots who threw paint on the Mona Lisa. I don't think it's bringing any awareness to the thing. I don't think it's, that's not jump starting it or anything like that. But I don't know what to do. But I, I will agree with you, though, that just discussing it like this, and this is now two times I'm discussing it, so thanks for bringing it up again if you're someone that cares about the environment like that. Um, yeah. So here we are once again discussing it because it's important. But like, I don't know if it's to, it's any action is being done. So I don't agree with when people do dumb shit like this. I don't agree with it. It doesn't it doesn't help the cause at all. You know, they're not they're not doing anything but bringing attention to them. Uh, you know, and that's just kind of like the, the unfortunate part of the world that you know we live in. I think it's harder because of social media to make an impact with something stupid like that. Now back in the day, it would hit the news, right? The news would pick it up, and then maybe that would spark people being like, oh, wow, the news picked us up. I wonder what's going on there. But nowadays, the news itself is so bullshit, they don't have anything to talk about, and we know it. You know, we get our things from the internet, and we go there, and we look for stuff, and then, like, what do we really care about things? I think we care more about comments than we do the thing that people are actually talking about. Ironically, during a, a segment I'm calling comments. <laughs> Think about that. But anyways, thanks for interacting. And this is the exact kind of like comment I love to interact with. This is a freedom of expression. I said what I had to say. This person came in and said what they had to say. Beautifully done. This is, we need more like that. I appreciate it. Uh, Kevin, Kevin is, Kevin, what is this one? Kevin Sram, S. Raman, whatever. You two are so cute together. All right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see M- M- Millie Pitt said not sure I could take your Wonka review seriously Eric we all know you're biased towards little cute white boys <laughs> hilarious that's true though I got I have Wiggy who just had a baby shout out to Wiggs uh, he's a cute white boy 
Matt Rife. I've known Matt his whole life. Cute white boy. Yeah, Matthew Espinosa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cute white boy, huh? That's three of them. Maybe this guy's maybe this guy's right. Um Raymond Thomas. Griffey, don't know why you don't have a milli subs. Man, so crazy. You're so funny. Thank you. Criminally underrated. I'm gonna change my name of my podcast to that. Riffin with Griffin. Criminally underrated. Um I think I should just name my next special that, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, what else we got here? Um, oh, oh yeah, the idiot from two weeks ago. He tried to respond again. Um, <laughs> you know, this guy, this guy, I hate. I look. I've talked about this before, and I'll say it again. I can't stand when people misrepresent what you're saying. Like, don't misrepresent represent what I'm saying, especially because you can go back and check the tape. You know what I mean? Go back and check the tape. So, you know, this guy, once again, is trying to to come into my chat and act like, you know, I said something that I didn't say. And then I responded to him. And then he wants to come back again and be like, no, nah, man, you're moving the goalpost. No, no, no. The goalpost wasn't moved. You could go back and check the tape. But, of course, he don't want to do that because, you know, you know how that goes. Uh, Jesse... Welcome to dadhood. We call it the piss cannon. <laughs> yeah. This boy be pissing and pooping. Let's see. Last one. Eric G85. You're a kind human being. Talking about your wife was a great to hear. A lot of relationships fail when spouses forget about loving one another. Um. Yeah, man. I just want to. I should reiterate that at point again. You know, it's like if you have a kid or major life events are going on and you know, when you're in a relationship, just like, just remember your your partner. I just feel like, you know, Rachel and I have a really great relationship. And I know it because in the midst of like being angry about something or being frustrated, or let's say like one of us is like hungry or tired. Instead of taking things personal, like the other person, especially Rachel, she'll be like, ooh, you're hangry right now, you know? And that it's like such a sign of like, two people understanding each other like that's what you need i'm telling you you need someone that understands you they get you and if they get you then there's really no reason to get upset and when you do get upset it'll be for something real if i'm like whatever cranky whatever something and she'll hit me with that like Oh, somebody's tired, you know, and then I'll just be like, ah, oh, you know what? I am tired <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Or you just, it makes me go like, ah, oh, you know what? My bad. I'm sorry. Or if like, I'm really, this, this is a, let me tell you, I'm going to give you, this is a Rachel hype moment right now. One of the best things she does. Okay. If we're upset, let's say we do get into a little thing and she feels it getting to a point. She'll go like this. Do you need a 15 second hug? And then she'll say, you know, come on, we have to do a 15 second hug. Before we continue. Now, for me, you're mad. You're frustrated. You're trying to be mad. You know what I mean? Like, I'm mad right now, woman. <laughs> she won't allow it. You know? And then, there, I'm telling you, y'all all need to try it in your relationships. 15-second hug in the middle of a fight. No matter what, you feel some things coming? Hey, let's give you... Because once you embrace your loved one and you start hugging and you counting out 15 seconds, all of the anger, all of the resentment, all of whatever you're feeling, it melts away. And then you're going to remind yourself that this person is someone I love. And now we can communicate in like, okay, what's really wrong? Just try it. Just try it. Try it, try it, try it. Um, you know what I mean? Just try it, guys. Anyways. Yeah, so that's that's what's going on there. So enough with the comments. Thank you for always leaving comments, guys. You want to leave a comment? Leave a comment on whatever episode you want to leave a comment on. I see somebody talking in a chat about the Matt Rife episode. I haven't had Matt on the podcast again. I have to, you know. I haven't, uh, yeah, we haven't had a, a time in a while, so I'll have to check that out. <laughs> um, I see somebody ask me, have you talked to Shaw post-concussion? That was so long ago that that happened. Well, not long ago. It was like weeks and weeks and weeks ago that that happened. <laughs> Yeah, he, he came, we were we were recording the, the golden hour, and he like, he was like, guys, look what happened. And I was like, oh, my God. I mean, we saw the video. It was, it was hard to watch. You know what I mean? You, you know, we, <laughs> but he finally was able to put it out. Um, 
Now it's time for our sponsor, Robin Hood. Robin Hood, did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you could still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robin Hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with 3% match. The offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. But anyways, um, all right, let's see where we at here now. Okay, guys, so let's get into the episode, some stuff that I wanted to talk about today. So let's start with uh, Shane Gillis on uh, SNL. Um, I thought it was, first of all, I thought it was very funny. I, I, I thought he was funny. It was like I watched the, most of the episode, and I don't really watch SNL like that because I don't find it that funny. I just find it awkward a lot of times. It's like they're clearly reading the scripts. You know what I mean? And I know that's something they've done for a long time, but it just gets it, sometimes it's just kind of jarring. Like you're at home thinking to yourself, like, "Hey, man, memorize the words. What are you guys doing?" So that, and then a lot of times it's just not funny. Just my opinion. And, and if I watch, I'll watch. Like I like Che and uh, what's his face. The, the the weekend update, you know, so they'll I like their dynamic, and so like I'll watch the weekend update. Maybe I'll check out the monologue if I know the comic or if I want to see how unfunny I think a person is. Like it'll be like some singer or something, and you'll be like, oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be hilarious. Let's see how this goes, right? So, but this one it was like, so all right. So let me t- let me give you my thoughts. This is what I think SNL putting Shane Gillis on s back. So if you guys remember, he was fired. You know, he, he had like some stuff on his podcast where he was making some jokes that people thought were inappropriate, right? Um, Shane Gillis is actually a pretty good dude, man. I don't find him to be a person that's like racist or anything like that. I think I'm smart enough in my, in my, for myself to, to, to understand the difference of somebody trying to be funny, uh, whether it be dark, whether it be racial humor, whether it be misogynistic, whether it be like whatever kind of humor you're trying to do. I think I can compartmentalize in my head of being like, oh, uh, the, the, he thought this was funny. It was funny. I don't think he's a terrible person. I think most of us can do that, but that doesn't sell newspapers and magazines or get clicks. Okay. So he got, so then, you know, SNL in the midst of cancel culture, they, they were hired him to be on the show cause he's super funny. And then they can't, they canceled it. They canceled him. They made an example of him, and boom. So now, ever since that, Shane Gillis has said, "All right, I'll do my own thing," and he did. He went out on his YouTube channel, made his own sketches, uh, still doing his podcast, still going out being funny, and built his own fan base. In the meantime, SNL is like the the, the ratings are just tanking. Like nobody watches the show the way they once did. It's not a water cooler watch anymore, you know? And the thing is, it's like, I think that the experiment of kowtowing to cancel culture has backfired economically. I think that SNL has looked and said, oh, because here's what I think happens. The people that are very sensitive towards things, they all, they, they're sensitive, but they don't actually support so they go to SNL and they go, I can't believe you have this guy. You Look what he said. Look what he did. And then they, they go, okay, you're right. We'll cancel him. And then they're going, oh, so do you like the show now? And those people are like, oh, we, we don't really watch your show. I don't watch your show. I just didn't want you to have him on it. Bye. You know, like they're not really supporting. <laughs> you know, it's like the best example of this is like the WNBA. So you have... Tons of 
fe- feminists, like sort of reporters, you know, pro women people on TV talking a lot about women aren't getting paid enough. The WNBA plays, uh, okay, they're saying that, but are they actually watching? Like, so all the women that think women should be paid the same as the, the women, female athletes should be paid the same as male athletes. Are you watching the sport? I think you'd only watch if like Taylor Swift was playing. If Kim Kardashian, like maybe that's what they should do. Like Taylor Swift should buy a WNBA team and then go to the games and then people will watch. Like the like the like the uh, NFL, so you already took a great product. The NFL was already the number one show on television. Okay, the number one show on television on five networks, I believe. Like of the top one hundred highest rated shows last year, I believe the number is like seventy five were NFL games. It already is popular. Taylor Swift comes in and brings this huge o- other audience of people. Now that last Super Bowl was the most watched Super Bowl ever, right? But it was already a great product is my point I'm trying to make. So maybe Kim Kardashian and famous women like that, they should buy WNBA teams, go to every game, and then make the girls and people be like, oh, wow, yeah, we support this. But don't be met. Like, if you're not doing that, if the ratings are terrible, then what? 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 So I think it's the same thing. Don't complain about it if you're not going to be a part of the solution. So this is what happens with this. So I think something like SNL, I think they have a sample size now where they can look back and be like, okay, so we've we've like have we we've had the woke agenda. We've made sure we hired all this, and you know we hired this person, Nasper. We we've gone into diversity, uh, but now we said, okay, even with diversity, we got to go. Well, we let's le- at least get the funniest people we can find. That should be the first thing they do. And then they said, okay, well, wait a minute, people aren't watching. Okay, so they're like, well, what are we doing? So let's let's get this guy back. You know what I mean? Like we thought he was funny. We kowtowed to the cancel culture, and it didn't work. Those people didn't watch our show. So let's let's do it. I think I'm glad they did it. I am so glad they put Shane Gillis on this show. Now, what do I think of what he did? His monologue was super awkward because he was nervous. And like the beginning of it was awkward because he's like, wow, this is the show that canceled me for things that I do and say. I'm super successful now. I got a, I got a Netflix special that's killing it. I'm selling a show. I'm selling out arenas. I'm killing it, and and now here's the thing that actually helped launch me is when they canceled me. So now Shane Gillis is on there a little uncomfortable at first, but I thought it was endearing. Uh, you know, he said his jokes, and and then he like got to the Down syndrome stuff because he has it in his family, and he made it personal, and then it just was like it got hilarious, and then I was like, oh wow, this dude, you know, I just feel like he sold it great, right? I thought it was really funny. So then. The next thing you know, you look at these these fucking articles, man. And then I was like, are we seeing the same thing? Like, this is craziness to me, guys. Craziness. You look at some of these headlines of these articles. Slate. Shane Gillis on SNL. What the cancel comedian's return as host says about the state of the culture war. I like that one. I have to read that one. Vulture. Why Shane Gillis bombed on SNL. What? What? Like, I never watched that show. It's criminally unfunny. Most of the time. Just, maybe I'm a hater. It's not my cup of tea. But that show, those sketches are more than not terrible, in my opinion. Okay? I was laughing... From start to finish on most of Shane Gillis' uh, uh, freaking sketches. They were so funny. In the moment, like the HR sketch was so funny. It was like, oh, he's making fun of... Uh, you look at these things. Controversial comedian Gillis struggles to make an impression. What? I... Oh, my God. The Hill, f- finally one good one. Shane Gillis flipped the script on the culture uh, scolds. Like, thank you. Like, 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 
This is an example of people are seeing different things. Oh, and then and then like Barstool Sports, of course they. Like, I don't know if you guys, you guys should watch this. The 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 uh, the the emu, you know, they cut that uh, commercial, the insurance, like you know that one emu emu. <laughs> Liberty, the Liberty Insurance sketch. Go watch that on SNL on on, on YouTube. That shit is funny, dude. Um, and then this one, the, another article. Shane Gillis bombs in his Asian. He did not bomb. I don't think people know what a bomb is. Oh my god! And then CNN. These dumb fucks, man. Shane Gillis turns on SNL show that. That uh, turn turn on SNL shows that all too often bigotry sells. What, dude? I just the way they are characterizing what happened is crazy to me. It's crazy to me. Now, here's my thing: comedians like myself. I'm old school, fifty, you know, years old. You know, so it's like, you know, you think as oh, cancel culture, blah blah. blah. Listen. I don't, I'm, I'm okay with you not liking something. I really am. Like, it's like, you're not going to like everything people do. I don't like everything people do. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's comics I watch. Like, I don't like that. That's not my cup of tea. Right? But I think they have the right to that expression. My problem is not that you don't like certain types of comedy. My problem is that when you try to remove it from society altogether. That is terrible. I just think that's a terrible precedent. I think that, you know, there's places for dark humor. Look at Anthony Jeselnik, you know? Anthony Jeselnik, that's why I don't understand why he was talking about Matt Reif, like talking shit about him. I, I just don't get that. And I, Anthony's a friend of mine, you know? I just haven't seen him to talk. I, I texted him about this like, yo, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like he says things that like you have to be a fan of his. If you're a fan of his, you're like, ah, you get it. You associate like there we I think most people are smart enough to go, I get the type of humor that you're doing, and I, I don't and I'm not gonna judge you as a person. I'm just saying I like or dislike this comedy and I move on with my life. You know? I just don't understand this thing of our people think that if it's if it's if I don't agree with it, then it should be removed. No, man. I think that it's like and then, like, when you actually listen to the nuance of what Shane Gillis is talking about, you know, yeah, there's some things where you go, ah, did you have to do that? But we all do that. I mean, there's, like, there's no, what I'm saying with comedy is there's no right way, you know, to, like, please everybody in a way that, like, you're not going to, you're not going to offend someone. It's some There's always a butt in the joke. And it's just how hard you slap it is what people are talking about. But there's so many people characterizing comedy right now. It's like, oh, bigotry deniers or, or you know, that kind of shit where you just go, oh, man, you are really overthinking this. This is just a funny joke. And then you determine if the comic sold it or not. That should tell you how funny or how talented or how, or how skilled a comedian is, is to be able to talk about something that is, say, off, off colored and they make it, you know, they do it in a way that it makes you laugh at what they're, the point they're trying to make through this darkness, right? If they can't achieve that, then they just come off as like a shock jock or something like that. Then, yeah, I agree with you. I go, and, but what I'm saying is that comic just isn't very good at what they do as opposed to being like, oh, if you talk about this, you're terrible, that you're a bad person, you should be removed from society. That sort of attitude needs to be removed. That needs to be removed from our society. And that leads me to the next thing I want to talk about is I come to find out that there's this Seattle comedy club that canceled four comedians, man. They canceled four comedians. And, you know, I was like, are you kidding me? So Jim Florentine was booked and it's called the Capitol Hill Comedy Bar. It should be called the Echo Chamber Comedy Club, you know? It should be called the Echo Chamber Comedy Club. I think that would be a more appropriate term for this comedy club. And actually, I'm going to like... So he he revealed an email that he received from the comedy club. And I'm going to read it to you guys right now. 
this is what the Comedy Club said. After careful consideration and discussion with our team, investors, local comedians, and neighborhood ag advocacy groups, we've encountered a challenging situation that requires us to revisit the planned shows. Capitol Hill is known for its progressive values, and we've received significant feedback expressing concerns about the alignment and these upcoming shows within the neighborhood's ethos. This feedback includes concerns from local advocacy groups that are deeply embedded in our community and work towards upholding its values. Go fuck yourself. Like, are you kidding me? Like, so the terrorists won. That's what happened here. So like, and, and this comedy club thinks all the people that were complaining are going to show up and support their comedy club. No, they're not. They just wanted to see what they could do. They just, they won. They canceled. Poor Jim Florentine. You know, it's him, Luis Gomez, uh, Dave Smith, and Kurt Metzger. Like, they canceled their shows. Now, listen, I know all these guys. Like Dave Smith, for instance. I don't know if you guys, Dave Smith is a, he is the epitome of a political comic, political activist. He's right-leaning for sure, he's more conservative leaning, but he expresses and articulates his point where if you disagree with him, well then, you know, you you could disagree with him. But to say that he shouldn't be allowed to articulate his point is ridiculous. That's the ridiculous part about it. You know? Like it's like I don't agree with everything the guy says, but I like listening I like listening. I like hearing like, okay, here's here's how he came up with that. Here's why he thinks this. It could inspire me to be like, if I were to be in front of him, be like, yo, man, I disagree. I think this. That is more important than just hearing what you want to hear. So this people talking about like local comedians, who if 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 the if you're a local comedian and you're like, yeah, I don't want these other that sounds like some hater aid right there. I'll never play this comedy club. I'll never play this comedy club. I don't think any legit comedian will play this comedy club because it's like, what? So you, you're for censorship. You're for like, oh, uh, yeah, we don't like how what you talk about. So we only want comedians that talk about what we want to talk about. Okay. It's like, good luck with that. Just, they should change their name to Echo Chamber. You know? Just change the name to Echo Chamber Comedy Club. And then only people that want to hear, like, you know, it's just all negative Trump jokes. And it's just all, like, you know, oh, you know, abortion and, like, whatever they. I don't know what kind of comedy that is. What kind of comedy is that? It doesn't sound entertaining. But yeah, I don't think anyone should go to this comedy club. Because they don't understand the essence and the art and the spirit of comedy. Or free speech, by the way. Like, to say that they, they're worried about the... Like, first of all, they, they should have been... They should have doubled down and advertised these comics. To make people come to this area. To be like, oh yeah, we heard something. Because you never... Like, first of all, what are they talking about? Like, if you're a, a, a person, a fan of comedy, you might go see this guy and be like... I could totally see a listen. I feel like a smart, intelligent person could go see someone that they disagree with and still laugh. I think you can go see these guys and be like, <laughs> "Man, I don't get what this guy says, but the way he said it, that was funny." I think that we are. I think that we're smart enough to do that. I mean, I, I, this is. I don't know. I'm speechless right now. I mean, I'm saying I'm talking about this off the cuff, and I'm just like. This is very disheartening. It's just very disheartening to know that there was a place that they considered. Like there was a club in Vancouver did this to me, you know, said like, well, I was going to go back. And then we got a message like, oh, um, yeah, you know, his comedy was whatever they said. And I was like, what? That's you're censoring what I'm talking about or how I'm talking about it. And then like it'd be one thing. If I went to a comedy club and I started doing my act and 10 minutes into my act, I haven't got one single laugh, right? Like 10 minutes into an hour set, no one in this room is laughing. Well, that's the sign 
of a terrible comedian, right? That's never happened to me ever. You go to a comedy club, people are, I'm killing, okay? Now, there might be a group of people who are like, I don't like this. Or they'll be like, if I'm doing some joke about women, because women are hilarious, they do hilarious shit, right? Maybe there's some girls, you know, they're in the back like, oh, I don't like this. This guy's misogynistic. This guy, okay, I get you. That's your opinion. So those girls didn't like it. But what I'm saying is, I see so many other women laughing. You know what I mean? Like, I've never had an experience like this where, you know, so what are they talking about? Like, you're never going to get 100% of the people in the room to come see you laugh, especially if you're catering to, um, what does they say here? Especially if you're catering to people with progressive values and advocacy groups. Do you think advocacy groups have a sense of humor about the thing they're advocating for? Of course not. <laughs> they think th this sounds like people who are taking themselves way too serious. You know? Yeah, go watch Dave Smith on Rogan. They have great conversations. You don't got to agree with the guy. You don't have to agree with him. But let the guy speak his point. And then you can listen and be like, okay, this is why I agree or this is why I disagree. But this idea of just removing people is the really, this is a bad precedent, okay? This is the, the extremes of cancel culture. Because, and I'm not fully against cancel culture, by the way. I feel like cancel culture is like, that's a bad definition. You know, this is just about like, you know, this is more about the action that you take for it. It's like, you know, you don't like something that's fine, but just to throw them out, you know, be like, well, I don't want the person to even be allowed to say things that I don't agree with. Because especially when it comes to jokes, you know, when it comes to jokes, like, and you know what's funny? Like these authors of these articles in these dumb papers trying to get clicks, I know that those people are in group chats with their friends saying terrible shit. You know what I mean? I'm sure they're in group chats with their friends and if we saw those things, we'd be like, yo, what's this? Because everybody has a sort of like dark humor in them. We all have dark humor. We all have like, it's just in the moment. It's like with your friends. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example of something because this is like a personal example. Like, so a buddy of mine I play video games with all the time. He lives in upstate New York and he like lives on a farm. You know what I mean? Cool kid. Cute white boy, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, he, uh, you know, we were gonna get on our group that we play Call of Duty with, but he hits us up like, yo, man, I'm just driving back. And one of the sheds on our property is on fire. And he's saying this in the text message. He's like, yeah, the shed's on fire, man. And the electricity's out. And, you know, it's like he's going in, he's going in in this thing about his thing. And then I write back, so are you getting on soon? <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. We all laugh. Now, why did we laugh? We laugh because something super serious is happening. And I made a joke like, I don't care. That made us all laugh because we know each other. We know that I obviously do care. And just saying that is a way of breaking the tension and, you know, making him like distract him from the thing that's going on. And we just laugh. Okay. We just, we laugh about it. Now. There are people who would be like, oh, man, that's messed up. How can you, man, that, look what happened to us. You know, it's like, oh, you missing the point. You, you missed the point. But I, gonna, I understand that, you know. Oh, okay, I understand. You just don't like that brand of, like, humor, you know. It's like, it's like those people that made jokes right after. Like, there's different types of jokes. You know, like, I remember when Kobe Bryant died and Ari Shafir was doing his dark humor joke things about like, you know, and it didn't go over well. Like it didn't go over well at all. Like Kobe Bryant is well loved the way he did it. Now, my, on the flip side of that, I, I, Tony 
tweeted out, Tony Hitchcliffe tweeted out something. He said, when he heard about Kobe's passing, he said, and he was, it was something like, you know, it was about, I heard about Kobe's passing and he said, I didn't believe it because Kobe doesn't pass the ball. Oh, that's a great joke. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just a great joke, you know? And it's like, but it's just, it's all about timing. You know what I mean? It's like timing, time and place. Like comedy has so many factors that make things funny or unfunny. And and I just think that when it comes to comedy, we have to take that in consideration. But I question all of these people's motives, these like news outlets and people's motives, because I just feel like, look how powerful it is. If you can get, if you can get, um, a a a, a, sh- a show like SNL. This show's been out for 30, 40 years. It goes way back to the 70s, whatever it is, right? And this small group of people on the internet could convince SNL to fire someone. That's power. And so all of these news people who are like not selling newspapers or like they need clicks and they need eyeballs, well, they're like, well, this is what people want. That's an algorithm of hate. So... When they talk about bigotry deniers, I just that's what I say. Well, these are hate deniers, you know? Anyways, I just feel like this was nonsense, and I just hope that they, you know, fix this nonsense. I, ho- I hope that this goes away. And, and when I'll say, to getting back to Shane Gillis, I'm glad that SNL made this choice. I'm glad they were like, you know what? It's like, let's bring him back, you know? Uh, and, and but oh man, it's so difficult because th- there's the left or super left progressive side that thinks that if you like Shane Gillis, you're a bigot. That if you like Shane Gillis, oh well, you're you're not a good person, and you like you know this 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 is why Trump won uh, the election. By the way, this is exactly why. It's like when you when sh- when when fucking what's her name Hillary Clinton said you know all the the what is it the undesirables or incorrigibles or whatever word she used. <clears throat> when she said, if you like Trump, you were this, then all those people are like, oh, 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 really? It's like, you can't make statements like that, but that's what these people do. That's what lefty progressive people do. That's just what they do, man. They make overall statements. There's no nuance to their discussions. There's nothing. There's no thought process. There's no idea that like, like the idea of like, hey, this is just a joke. It has to be like unpacked into this thing that it's not just a joke. You're you're a terrible person. Eh. I think that's a bad precedent and good for SNL being like, you know what? This hasn't helped our bottom line. Like it hasn't. Like they, they're like, oh, people aren't watching our show anymore. All those people who are like all about canceling, they're not turning on SNL. They're not. They're not like good. Now I can watch this show in peace without having that bigot on here. They're not watching. They only care about clout chasing and, you know, oh, we got them canceled. Yeah. Who else? Let's move on to the next. And then SNL's like, wait, we're not, people aren't watching our show anymore. Because the rest of us who have common sense, most of us who are just kind of like, oh, I know the difference between, oh, that's a bad joke. Oh, that was a good joke. Oh, that guy, oof, that that didn't, that, he, that one didn't hit the way he wanted without judgment. You know what I'm saying? Anyways. Uh, last story, I, you know, it's just because I just remember, I've told this before, but it just reminds me of like, I was at a kid's funeral, I was speaking at a kid's funeral, this kid I knew, this kid I coached, this kid that it was like, you know, and he, he died tragically, and I'm at his funeral, and I have to go up here and do this eulogy, man, and I'm sitting up here, and I'm looking down, and I'm talking, and I, I'm, 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 I'm a crybaby, so I'm like, I'm fucking bawling, you know, and then I just start talking about him. And I'm just like, well, you know, I see all his girlfriends here, so I know he's going to be in trouble. You know, and then people start laughing. And then I just start talking about him, you know, the things that like, you know, how, how he was. And then like, we're laughing at a funeral, you know, people were laughing. And I just thought, man, that's a gift. You know what I mean? Like laughter is a gift. And it doesn't mean that you you don't care about a person. I mean, you laugh. You laugh in many different ways. You laugh in anger. You laugh in sadness. You laugh when you're happy. You laugh when you're when you're mad. You laugh when you disagree. You know what I mean? You ever have a fight with your girl and you're like, <laughs> oh, oh, 
you know what I mean? Whatever, however you're like, whatever your emotions are, it laughter is there. So I just feel like that should be encouraged. You know, and even in the midst of jokes that you find offensive, you know, because it's like sometimes you go just be at a comedy club and you'll look and you'll see you can't get 100 percent of the people to agree with you. But there are different types of people who are agreeing because they're laughing. So there might be one girl in the back who's like, I don't like this guy. But there's 10 girls over here on this side who are cracking up. It just it, it's like that in comedy. But these progressive liberal people are like, well, if a few people don't like it, it means they're gone. Because the guy that got canceled, he said tons of tickets were already sold for his show. So these people are like, they care more about pretending to be good people than they do, you know, being good business people or whatever. And I'm not saying that money, like, you know, just because... You, just because money is made doesn't mean it doesn't make anything right. And that's the nuance of it, guys. That's why you have to find the nuance in that. You know what I mean? Because I know there's people who will comment that like, oh, so making money means that, 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 that anything is, should be said. I am not saying that. OK, that idiot that always comments, that's what he'll do. You know, he'll make some dumb comment. You know what I mean? Without like, there's no, there's no nuance in that dumb bitch's perspective. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just it's like I can't stand that. I can't stand when there's no nuance to your perspective, you know, and that's and that's the kind of attitude, you know, it's like you come into my comments, be like this. You disagree, but tell me why and tell me your thing, you know, but no, people like to go, oh, I, you said this. That's a L. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> like, do you know how to communicate with people? You know, like that's what. Find a nuance. All right, guys. I just I feel like I just freaking. We just went on and on with that. All right, last one here. Let's just talk about this new show. On Netflix, The Last Airbender. I'm going to give my review of The Last Airbender. Uh, if you don't know what Airbender is, a young boy known as the Avatar must master the four element powers to save the world and fight against an enemy bent on stopping him. You know? So there's like some like fantasy world where there's like people that can manipulate water, people that can manipulate fire, people that can manipulate air, people that can manipulate uh, uh, earth, right? And they live in these four different kingdoms and they live in harmony. And within these kingdoms, what helps keep the harmony is every generation an avatar and the avatar is someone that can control all four elements and they keep the balance and the peace between the kingdoms. And in this story, the fire kingdom has decided that they want to rule the world and they know where the avatar is going to come from. They know because of history that it's going to be the next avatar is going to be amongst the airbenders. So they go on a quest and they go to wipe out all the airbenders so they can rule the world. Cut to pick up in the story. Um, what do I think about airbender on um, this uh on Netflix. So Airbender has gone through a lot. Like there's the anime version, there's, there's comic books. And then, you know, M night Shyamalan really like set it back a hundred years, uh, with his version was just like, I'm talking God awful movie making. That was just terrible. But anyways, cut to this one. Now they've tried to do it again and they have like a series. Okay. Now, what do I think of this series? Um, overall, I enjoyed the series. I, I, uh, I binge watched it, you know. I binge watched the whole thing, and I I re I, I enjoyed it, you know. Uh, it wasn't terrible, right? But there were some things about it that I was like, oh, okay. I thought the acting and the performances were at times, but it's a kids show, you know. It's a show for kids, I believe. I don't know. I think it's like for both adults and kids. If you're if you're into Airbender, this fucking mic is still doing. You know, I'm still I'm still so I, I, I'm awkward with this mic. We'll figure it out though, guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just like, I feel, oh my god! And then the, the, my my oh, that thing popped off. I don't know how to figure this out. Anyways, um, yeah. So uh, I I just felt like here's the thing. I thought it was like. There were moments where I was like, oh, this is cheese ball. And then there were other moments where I was like, oh, this like there were like moments that made me emotional. And I thought, oh, this is just a filmmaking issue. I feel like 
I feel like that in the making of this show, they rushed it. It feels to me like they didn't give the actors a chance. So it was probably like you have this kid actor who I'm not sure how old he is, but he doesn't look of age. So it means to me that they they can only film a certain number of uh, some hours. And I feel like they had to like work around these kids and then they just kind of rushed through it. There's a lot of special effects to do. And I feel like they didn't give it the time it needed. And it's probably a money issue. It's probably like expensive show. It's like, well, we got to get this done. And they didn't give the actors the time to really live in them in, in these characters. That being said, knowing that in my head from being on sets and stuff, I think they did a pretty good job. I think that these actors did a pretty good job. They were funny when they needed to be funny, uh, but it just was corny sometimes, you know? And I feel like anytime it was corny, it was rushed. I feel like the directors are probably like, okay, one more take. And it was probably like, all right, good. We got it. Let's move on. Moving on, moving on to the stunt scene. You know, I felt like it was like that. But I feel like even with that, the, these everybody did a great job. Like, even that being said, I still believed everybody. I believed the universe they created. This kid is doing a, a, a great job. The star of the show, uh, what's the kid's name? I don't know what his name is. Gordon Cormier. He better be, wait, is Gordon? Is, is it, wait, let me see if this is the kid. Because, yeah, it is, it is, it is. His name is Gordon Courier. He's he's great. Likeable little kid, you know? You know what I mean? Like, you just, you like what he's doing. And all the other kids in the show are, like, doing a good job. Uh, the adults, it, I always, I always um, gauge a kid show based off how the adults are doing in the show. Uh, yeah, and somebody said the CGI people, they were janky. I totally agree. But I feel like that's a filmmaking issue. Like, that's on the production. That's on like Netflix being like, okay, you have this amount of money. And they're like, yeah, but look at all these special effects. We got flying bears and we have fire that has to come out of people's hands and, and smoke. And, and you, know, you know what I mean? Like there's so many special effects in this show that was probably very costly post-production for this show. And so I feel like they made a choice. All right, we, let's zip through the, uh, the acting part and then let's get to the post-production. And, they, and they, it, it, it was probably like a huge budget and they probably didn't allocate resources in the way that they probably could. It's probably hard. You know, you, you got a timeline. You got a small, like a, a relatively however what the budget is and what you could spend. And it just turned out the way it turned out. You know what I mean? There's a lot of flying and like, I'm telling you, there's like so much going on in this show that I just feel like maybe in the second season, they'll get it figured out. You know, maybe Netflix is like, all right, this was a really popular show. Take your time. Here's a, this amount of money. But like, it was like, you know, but what I was saying, I'll finish with this. I really enjoy, I, I judge a kid's sort of show based off how the adults are doing in the show. Like, are the adults making this feel like this is real? And when they do that, it really adds to it. That's why I like Percy, the new Percy Jackson. Because all the adults in that, they really sell it. And if you're selling it, man, that really, you know, that 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 adds to uh the believability of the the um the show. You know what I mean? Um uh, wait, I'm looking up some uh some music for y'all right now. Uh for the rap for the rap recap. I don't know why I keep doing that. I'm old. I'm, when my son gets older, he's going to look at these and be like, "Ugh, dad, you corny as hell. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to be like, I can't wait for that. But yeah, that's why. I, but even if you look at like Harry Potter, if you go back to the Harry Potter movies, all those great British actors that they had in Harry Potter, they made it real. Like if They're like pretending to do magic and they're like, pretending to care about this make-believe thing. And when adults give a certain level of like realness to it, it just adds to it. And then the kids can just like coast in it and they're just killing it. You know what I'm saying? So I do give, I think the last airbender is worth the watch. I would binge watch it if I was you. Um, you know what I mean? Oh, somebody made a good point in the chat. They also have to make it fast before the kids start looking too old. That is totally true, man. Like kids at a certain age, 
they change quick. And it's so weird when they change, you know? Like, if you're looking at a kid go from, like, 11 to 17, there's that awkward age where you're like, who the hell is this? It's so, I totally agree with that, too. So, it's like, yo, we got to get this going. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Anyways, so I really enjoyed Last Airbender, and I think you should watch it. Let me know what you guys think. Um, every time I fart, I always think I'm an airbender. <laughs> Stupid. Dad jokes. Who got them dad jokes? But, oh, my God. I'm going to have to, you know what I'm going to have to do? I forgot to put my mid-roll. Um, I'm going to have to copy and paste my ad. I, you guys, I was in a groove so much that I forgot to add my ad. <laughs> So I'm going to have to re-upload this episode. But anyways, that being said, guys, thank you for watching Riffin' with Griffin. Make sure you subscribe uh, and all that good stuff to the show. You, you hear me? You feel me, y'all? Make sure you watch. But anyways, you know what time it is. Yeah! Riffin' with Griffin, Rob Recap! Here we go. Don't get slapped. Cancel culture. It's whack. Thank you, SNL, for bringing Shane Gillis back. They on crack. Writing these stupid reviews. This shit ain't new. The comedian crew won't be going to that Seattle comedy club. What they did, they don't get the dub. That was a flub. Hey, don't forget to sub. All right, y'all. <laughs> Thank you for watching Riffin with Griffin. And I'll see you next.